In question number five, they give us f of x equals the absolute value of x minus four over x minus four. And in our class, we know this as Jesse's giant step. It's basically a staircase, but with just one large step. And that step happens when x equals four. So students in my class know how to graph this, or they should know how to graph this. This specific limit question says, find the limit of that function, of that giant step, as x approaches four. And something really interesting is gonna happen here. Using a similar technique from the prior problems, I'm gonna identify where along the x-axis I need to look at, and in this case it's four. And I'm gonna to project towards the curve. The problem is the curve is happening in two different spots on the graph. There's a portion that's happening up here, but there's another portion that's happening down here. So as I approach the curve from the left, and I go towards that arrowhead, I'm at a value of, a y value of negative one. However, if I approach the arrowhead from the right along the curve, now I'm up here at one. So in one case, I'm approaching negative one down at the bottom, but at the, at the top, I'm approaching positive one. For a limit to exist, these two numbers have to be the same. You can't be approaching negative one and one at the same time. So we're actually gonna write DNE, which stands for does not exist. And one of the reasons for a limit not existing is that the left-hand side value does not equal the right-hand side value. In this case, negative one does not equal positive one. But we're gonna simply state left does not equal right or L not equal to R. Moving to example six, we have Jesse's giant step again. It's in fact the same exact graph as it was in question five. What has changed though is the limit question. This says find the limit of f of x as x approaches five. So x approaching five is gonna to reveal to us where along the x-axis we need to look. So I'm gonna look at x equals five and in this case, there's only one place where the graph lives when I look up and down. It only lives up here, that's it. So if I jump out to the left a little bit and reapproach, I'm hovering at a y value of one. If I jump to the right and reapproach, I'm still at a y value of one. And I know that because it's over here. So as you may have guessed, the answer to this limit question is one. In the last three examples, we're gonna talk about three cases when a limit does not exist. The three reasons when a limit might not exist are DNE does not exist because the left and the right side are approaching different values. Another reason is DNE does not exist because of unbounded behavior. The Y values either keep climbing larger and larger and larger without any sort of limitation, or they get smaller and smaller and smaller without any limitation. And the third reason is DNE oscillation, which means as, uh, as you approach from the left or the right, the Y values just oscillate and flip-flop back, back and forth between uh, two or more values. So let's take a look at number seven, which is f of x equals the cosine of one over x, and the graph is given down below. The question asks us to find the limit of that cosine graph as x approaches zero. So this is an interesting one. Zero is right here with the red dot, and you can just see that when you graph this, and you could do this on your graphing calculator, right around zero, right around the origin, the graph sort of goes crazy, and it starts flip-flopping back and forth rather erratically. And in this case, the left and the right-hand side of zero are not approaching the same value. So if you had to take a guess out of which of the three this would be, what might you pick? Well, if you picked DNE oscillation, you'd be correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and write DNE oscillation. Okay, looking at number nine, which eight and nine I've, I misnumbered, so it's really seven, nine, eight, but it's seven, eight, nine, whatever. Looking at the one in the middle here, the function is f of x equals negative one over x squared. Now in my class, this is the basic shape of the praying mantis, but turned upside down because of this 
negative that precedes it. So it's an upside down praying mantis and the graph is given down below. And the question says, find the limit of this function as x approaches zero. Now, when we learn in pre-calculus about the praying mantis graph, we know that at zero, zero, there are asymptotes. So there's a horizontal asymptote here and there's a vertical asymptote here. So if you find x equals zero, which is here, and you go to the graph, the graph never actually gets to zero, but if you jump to the left and then follow along, as you get closer and closer, as the x values hug in tighter and tighter, the y values get lower and lower and lower, but they just keep going forever. And the same thing happens when we jump to the right to the curve. As these x values get closer and closer to zero, the y values just keep dropping and dropping and dropping forever. So if you had to take a pick out of which of these three reasons the limit does not exist, which would you put for this one? Well, if you guessed DNE unbounded behavior, you'd be correct. So it's worth noting that writing DNE is not sufficient. You have to parenthetically give the correct justification. So I'm going to go ahead and put DNE unbounded behavior. Okay, looking at the last example, number eight, is just a rational function, uh, f of x equals x plus three over x minus one. Now you, re you might remember from a pre-calculus class that um, there's going to be a vertical asymptote at x equals one. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. And there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. And the reason that's going to happen is because the, degree, the degrees of the top and the bottom are the same. So the ratio of the leading coefficients gives us y equals one. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in. Okay, that wasn't super accurate, but I think you get the idea. So the question says, find the limit of this rational function as x approaches one. So let's find x equals one. And you'll notice if we look up and we look down, the graph actually never touches it. But if we jump to the left and approach, as those x values get closer and closer to one, the y values just keep dropping lower and lower and lower. If we find x equals one, and this time we jump to the curve but to the right, and we just keep approaching towards that value, x equals one, now the y values are climbing, 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 climbing without bound. So this does not have a, a limit either, the y values increase without bound on the right and they decrease without bound on the left. So I'm going to put DNE unbounded behavior again. And you might be wondering why I didn't give an example of DNE left does not equal right, but we actually did cover that in a prior example. I think it was number I think it was number 5 or 4 or something like that. So anyway, uh, this, is the video, this has been the video on the introduction of limits. We'll call it Limits 101, just the real basic idea here. And a couple of things that I'd like you to take away, and that is that there's actually a lot more to it than this, but this gives you a nice foundation. And another thing that I'd like to stress is that a limit question is asking about what the Y values are doing. So your answer always has to be reflecting what the Y values are tending toward. And the last thing that I'd like you to keep in mind is that not every limit question has an answer. Sometimes the answer is DNE, and that is that the limit does not exist. And when this is the case, you have to specify for which reason it does not exist. Left does not equal right, unbounded behavior, or oscillation. I hope this video has helped.